a little tired of watching ship after ship slowly descend and burst into flames. Maybe not. Maybe this is the best part. Well, it looks like we're going to space after all. Establish a stable orbit. And return your probe to Kerbin. That's the kicker, isn't it? They always get you in the fine print. Accept. Deep breath. Here it goes. Okay, we'll start with OSD2. Here's our little ship. Did this okay. Now, what do we need to do here? Our second stage, we're going to add another fuel tank. Let's make it orange to match. We're going to put on some wings. Now let's try an SAS. We have to pay for it in advance, 7,000. Ah, it's steep, but we're going to use this so much. How many parts do we have left? Okay, so we can still add eight more parts. We're going to take off these Separatrons. That day has passed. Um, we don't need the... Oh no, maybe we do want the thermometer. Who knows where we're going to land, right? Okay. Let's decoupler. Let's take off the decoupler. Let's put a fuel tank, a tiny one, on our probe. And that's where we'll use our terrier. The terrier I need to buy. It's a tiny engine, only 60 thrust. But it does extreme it's extremely efficient in a vacuum, and it's nice and light. Okay, that's 704. You know what? Honestly, we might want a bigger bigger fuel tank than that. Let's buy this guy. All these fuel tanks. They cost money now, but we're gonna be thankful to have them later. We're gonna yeah, there's, we're gonna buy them sooner or later, so might as well buy them now. Okay. That's good. I like the fifteen hundred delta V in the top stage. It's still not too heavy. Hopefully the parachute's enough to bring this down safely, and hopefully if the fuel tank's empty, it'll cause us to float. So let's throw on a decoupler, three-stage rocket, 4,262 meters per second. That should be plenty. We've got a good thrust-to-weight ratio at every point in the game. Maybe too much in the second stage. We'll see. Hopefully that, ah, you know what? It's terrible design. But I think I'm going to add some fins on anyways in the second stage. Just because we had that tumbling problem last time. 26 parts. Okay. Good. Alright. Box D3. Save and launch. Okay, nighttime launch. Gotta be honest, I'm having some second thoughts about these fins halfway down. They're above the center of mass, so when they get going fast, they're actually going to be working uh, directly against the fins at the bottom. And if we start to tip, they're going to push us in the wrong direction. But the fins at the bottom are a lot bigger, and they do have the ability to uh, change their angle of attack. So, now what the hell, let's just go with it, right? Full throttle. Actually, no. Amend that. Half throttle. For the second stage, which is liquid. 
and then we'll go up if we're stable. And... Looking good so far. Now normally, with our greater than two thrust to weight ratio here, I would be pitching over to the side already. We're gonna wanna fly uh, to the west. West, no, to the east. Sorry, to the right from where we are now. And the sooner we tip, the less that we're fighting gravity and the more efficient our ascent to orbit is. But we've got a problem with our radio signal. You can see right now, we've actually got a very strong signal. All right, here we go. We're gonna go to look at fuel stage. Hopefully it's stable. Now we're gonna try pitching over just a bit. Oh. Error. Okay. Thrust up. Back in control. Okay, thrust up a bit more. Stay lined up with our proapsis, with our prograde direction. This is a lot more delicate than I would like. We're wasting out the V here for sure. So what I was saying is we need to be careful that we don't leave our communications range before we achieve a stable orbit. Because we've only got that strong connection because we have a direct line of sight to the Kerbal Space Center. And the earlier and heavier we pitch over sideways, the further along from the horizon we're going to be before we reach stability. And if the Kerbal Space Center goes over the horizon from us at any point, all right, here we go, stage three. Oh, staging this up. We're gonna have to move the engine down here. All right, full thrust on this. Now our apoapsis is at 75, so we're going above orbit already. We're gonna start burning pretty much full sideways. Yeah, so if we're not in a stable orbit before Kerbal Space Center goes over the horizon, then we're gonna lose complete craft control. And if we're in mid-burn, we're going to just keep burning out into space. And if we have stopped burning but haven't got a stable orbit yet, then we're just going to follow our trajectory. Uh-oh. Well, <laughs> that's what we're doing regardless. We've run out of fuel, planned our burns totally wrong. I was paying too much attention to the talking, not enough to the flying. We're out of fuel, no more course changes to be made. And look at this. Apoapsis, way up in space. 370,000, much higher than we needed to go. Periapsis, middle of the Earth. Middle of the Kerbin. So, I heard a little bleep bleep, meaning that we have some science to do. We're gonna do our Mr. Goo. From space, we're gonna transmit it back, at least lock in that four and a half science. And then we're just gonna watch ourselves fly like a cannonball on the far side of Kerbin. Try again. At least it's pretty. Oh, we're gonna land in the daylight? That's nice. And yeah, we have no no probe control now at all. So as we come in, even if there was science that we could do. Or over the grasslands. We're not anywhere, especially new shores, water. These are all biomes we've been to before. But even if we had science to do right now, or the lack of uh, communications linked to Kerbal Space Center means we're just falling like dead weight. Can't turn anything on, can't change direction. At least we're going to do a little bit of a re entry test here. Ideally, when we were re entering under control, we'll point ourselves retrograde have a better profile, but it survived your entry just fine, which means if we can do our trajectory right, we won't have to worry about that at all. It's a little depressing. This weight, this is well after in a non-hardcore save you would definitely 
have reverted to avoid having to just watch your poor creation splash at 100 meters a second into the concrete sidewalk of an ocean. Yeah, not a piece of debris left survived. All right, back to the space center. Okay, troubleshooting time. This is uh, how I spent a lot of my Kerbal Space Program career. Looking at ships, trying to figure out what went wrong, how to improve them for next time. So we had enough Delta V. Um, part of the problem was just pilot error. If I had waited until we were actually above the atmosphere to start burning with the final stage, then we may well have ended up in a circular orbit that was in space, rather than that hugely eccentric orbit that took us up to 350,000. But let's add a little more fuel anyways, because our thrust rate weight ratio is just ridiculously high right now. You need at least a 1 to take off. Um, anything above 2, 2.5 is usually going to be wasteful and harder to control. And also, once you're in space, you don't even need that one, because that one at takeoff is just because if you're thrust less than your weight, you can't fight gravity. But once you're in space and burning sideways, anything above zero really is going to be shifting your orbit. Okay, so we've got much more, we've got much more delta V now. We've got a more reasonable thrust to weight ratio on the first two stages at least. Uh, our vessel's longer, which brings those fins down further and gives us a bit more stability. I'm even going to add one more fuel tank at the top level here. Okay. Now with this, I don't think we can go wrong. Payloads seem fine. Let's go for it. Now, to be honest, that probably wasn't the best way to adapt our ship because I was not paying attention to the. Okay, let's start the launch. I was not paying attention to the cost, and our Kerbucks are going to be a limiting factor, of course. So, given that we had enough Delta V, we could have reduced the power of our ship, maybe had less fuel less powerful engines and working out that way. Um, adding more fuel has solar problem as well, but it's also increased our cost. But given this is our first time to orbit, I think it's worth it to have the uh, extra margin for error. Hopefully we'll have a lot of extra fuel to burn when we're looking to come back down to uh, the orbit. Okay, fuel stage. We don't want full thrust. We'll do both one though. It's 1.3, that looks good. And we're gonna try pitching over a bit this time. Again, do it more gently and see if we can retain control. Yeah, it's fighting me a bit. But it's working. It's already looking better. And increase our thrust a bit. And we can edge up over two without losing control. nice and stable. Now we're just going to slowly pitch over with prograde until we're sideways, or more realistically, with this vessel until our, our aquapsis is above the atmosphere. And then we're going to coast up above 70 and start burning sideways. And having this steep angle of attack, like I said before, is a uh, Having the steep ascent is not bad for us. There we go. Apple is 80. Because the fact that we haven't pitched over all that much means that when we do reach 80, KSC should still be more or less below us. Speeding up. We've got it back out to space. Okay. We're at 70, so we're just going to pitch over completely and burn straight for the horizon. 
Now when our orbital speed gets up just over 2,000, that should be able to maintain, maintain orbit. But we'll be checking out on the map as well. Yeah, full thrust here, we're just... So much power, so much unnecessary power in the permanent space. Keeping our apoapsis down around 80, that's good. Stage, didn't fix our staging, but that's okay. At least we noticed before we used our parachute. Yeah, we have a ton of fuel. See our periapsis coming up, and our apoapsis is staying roughly the same because we're pointing straight at the horizon. Just watching the map here. So we need our periapsis is coming up, coming up, coming up. Once our periapsis is right there, now we're at the periapsis, and the other end of our orbit is at 151, which means that we should have achieved orbit, achieved a stable orbit. Um, there's nothing to be gained for us right now in actually going around Kerbin. So the question is, when do we want to deorbit? Do we want to deorbit immediately? Oh, right. Oh no, okay, yes, we do have fuel tanks. So, that should mean that we're able to float, because they'll be full of air when we come down. I think that it's to our benefit, actually, to... It's definitely to our benefit to empty these tanks. Now, there's no direct way to do that without a fuel vent, which I don't think we even have in the tech tree, and we definitely don't have on the ship. So, what I'm going to do... It's a little bit reckless, but I think it's the best the best thing. Is we're gonna look at how much Delta V we have left. 1387. So we're gonna bring forward for about 600 Delta V, pushing our orbit out further. And then when this reads 787, we're gonna turn around and burn back in the opposite direction. We're just burning fuel here just to get rid of the weight and increase our buoy increase our buoyancy. And good. Now turn this sucker around. And back the other way. lucky there. So you'll notice if we look, we lost control mid-burn. KSE just dipped over the horizon there. Now we were very fortunate. Oh no, we weren't fortunate enough. I was going to say we were very fortunate that it dipped over the, over the horizon when we were burning in the right way to cancel our orbit. And we're coming down on a nice trajectory right now. This is going to be totally safe, totally fine. But, we don't have probe control to open our parachute. So, there's, unless we passed over one of the other launch sites, which have weak antennas on them, which we're not going to, I don't see how we're going to re regain probe control before we impact with the uh, surface. Let's find out. This is our second ballistic missile of the day. Yep. Oh. Sorry, Proby. Sorry, Osti. Probably going to speed this up more on the actual playback. I have a feeling that you guys might get a little tired of watching ship after ship slowly descend, burst into flames. Maybe not. Maybe this is the best part.
still 132,000 per bucks. And each launch is cost, I guess, 13. Okay, well, we're only going to need one more. Exactly one. That was day 3.3. Here we go. So, after all that talk along the way about the need to custom fit our ascent profile to our communications limitations, I still did exactly the thing I was trying to avoid. So here's what we're doing this time. We're launching straight up. We are not bending over in the atmosphere. We're going to launch, we're going to fly directly perpendicular to the surface until we reach space. Then we're going to use all that extra fuel that we had from last time. We're going to burn horizontal. We're going to reach our orbital speed while still pretty much directly above the Kerbal Space Center. We're going to achieve our orbit. We're going to burn directly back. And we're going to land pretty much right back where we started. Having achieved a theoretical orbit, but not actually orbited at all. And then we'll never leave line of sight of Kerbal Space Center. Let's go with the uh, half fuel burn again. For stability sake. Now I'm just watching that apoapsis so I know when to cut power and coast. Uh, now one nice thing about having this should be so overpowered in terms of the thrust to weight ratio um, compared to what would be optimal is that for a mission profile like this where I'm looking to reach a speed quickly, come back from the speed quickly, I don't need to worry about how much time I actually have in space. This can go from a sort of dead stop up and down ballistic, ballistic trajectory to an orbit in like less than a minute of burning, which is something that a lot of our later ships will not be able to do, because it would be so inefficient to bring that much power into space. But right now, with our limited options, it's actually working out in our favor. Straight up, apoapsis, let's go for... 80 again. Now we're just going to coast. We're going to pitch over sideways, but with no engine burning until we're actually in space. I'm pretty sure we don't have any science to do at this point. We've been here enough times before. You'll notice that we are still traveling slightly to the east. Um, that's because even though we burned straight up, we've got that starting um, inertia from the spin of Kerbin itself, which is why going into orbit to the east, heading east, takes less delta V than doing it in, in any other direction. So if we want to land right back at Kerbin, right back at KSC, then when we do our retro burn, we're going to have to actually overburn a little bit in order to fight that starting inertia. Now we're landing by parachute. We don't really care where we land as long as we're within communications range on the way down. So here we are. We're in space. 75. Let's jets again. Our horizontal velocity is going up. Apple apps is staying about the same. from KSC, but we're still, it's far from the horizon. And our horizontal speed is up to 1400, we're most of the way there. We've reached our peak, we're coming down slowly, but that's not a worry at all. We have plenty of time. And that's orbit. Double check our mission. Yeah, achieved orbit. Return to 
turn straight around. Oh yeah, we're not going to be able to la able to land at KSC because we don't have enough fuel left to fully reverse our orbit. Just to slow down enough to reach re-entry. But that's fine. We can actually activate our parachute early, which would have saved us last time. If we hadn't if we hadn't corrected our staging last time, we honestly would have been fine. Because if you fire the parachute in vacuum, it won't actually release, it gets armed. It won't actually release until you're in a full, uh, full pressure environment. So just to be safe, because I'm not sure, look at our trajectory. Oh yeah, we should be in sight of Kerbin almost till we hit the ground. Sight of, sight of KSC, I mean. But just to be safe, let's actually fire our parachute now. And you can see it's still in its cone, but if we click on it, it says disarm where we'd usually say arm, and deploy mode when safe. So it should just fire on its own once we're at full pressure. It'll fully go out at a thousand meters from the ground, which is probably higher than we need, but that's fine. Extra safety margin. And let's see what happens. We're back in the atmosphere. Point ourselves fully retrograde. Just even though we know that the uh, re entry forces aren't going to be any real threat to our vessel, we'll minimize them as, as much as possible, anyways. We'll see those heat bars come up, um, telling us how close we are to overheating. Oh, we may not even get hot enough, hot enough to see them this time. No, we didn't see any at all. And we're coming to retrograde. One of the nice things, there's our parachute is that even if we're overheating, usually the things at the front of the cone obviously will take the brunt of it. And we wouldn't mind if we lost our engine, if we lost one of the fuel tanks. I guess we wouldn't want to lose two, because we need to hope that we float, unlike last time. Because we do have to actually retrieve our vessel. So hopefully, hopefully I'm right that empty fuel tanks are buoyant. It would be kind of shocking if they weren't. go. Slowing down to, yeah, so we're setting at five and a half meters a second now. Most things in the game can survive that kind of impact. And our probe, I think, can survive up to 12 or 18 or something. So this is gentle splashdown. Hmm. What our next mission is after this? To the moon? There's no way that we're going to the moon until we've, uh, we might have to do a couple of satellite launches without a contract. Oh, and we're floating, thank god. Yeah, we're not going to be able to reasonably do a moon mission unmanned without launching a relay satellite network first. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get paid to launch those re relay satellites unless we find just the right prime contract for ourselves. But I guess we'll tackle that bridge when we come to it. Tackle that bridge. We'll cross that bridge and tackle that fish <laughs> when we come to it. Sorry, guys. What's going to be next? Oh, man, so many options. First Kerbal in space. Do we even have a command pod? We're going to put him in a chair. But that's for next time. Thanks, guys.